Hey everyone, it's Casey here from BlueHouseDigital.com, and today I'm going to be coming to you with another exciting After Effects tutorial. We're going to be looking at 3D Stroke from Red Giant Software. It's a plugin you can go and buy from RedGiantSoftware.com. Um, we're going to be looking at a couple of different motion graphics, but before we start, I just want to fill you in on our next week's tutorial is going to be on the Audio React feature in uh, trap code form. So here's a quick motion graphic I made this morning and uh, we'll be covering this next week. Pretty cool. Okay, so the first, the first motion graphic we're going to be focusing on is this kind of underwater scene. I'll play it for you right now. This motion graphic, I'm not going to be talking too much about uh, the underwater aspect. I want to be looking more at the logo and be talking about the plugin, which is Trapcode or sorry, Red Giant's 3D Stroke plugin. Uh, first of all, let's kind of talk a little bit about what the 3D Stroke plugin is. Uh, this is a volumetric stroke path generator that allows you to re repeat, transform, bend. Uh, and pretty much manipulate any of your stroke paths uh, in 3D. So if you looked at my other tutorial that I just posted on using the stroke generator that's native within After Effects, uh, that's only a 2D generator. And uh, pretty much Red Giant outdid itself with this plugin and allows us to do a lot more things that you know we normally couldn't do. So we're going to hop right in. The first half of this tutorial, I'm going to focus on more of the basic elements. Uh, creating stroke paths, um, using the taper feature, using the repeater feature. The second half is going to be dealing more with the 3D aspects um, and, and you know transforming and bending and um, looking at an, another motion graphic, which you'll see towards the end of this tutorial. So let's hop right in. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our logo, and we're going to go ahead and outline it. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, if you followed along from our previous tutorial, um, actually I'll just I'll, I'll do a brief overview. You're going to want to go to Tools and select your Pen Tool. And we're going to create a mask around the, our entire logo. If you, you go in, you can see I have three separate masks set up. And pretty much I just took the Pen Tool and I just carefully went around. And so I got a nice smooth edge all around our logo. Then in order to get the three, 3D Stroke feature to work, you're going to want to click on your Effects Control Panel. And we're going to keyframe here at the end. So at zero, we're going to set a keyframe at zero at, on the end. And then right before six seconds, I set another keyframe at 100. So this will tell the plugin to start the stroke generation over that uh, six second time period. The next thing that I'm going to look at here is the taper feature. So if I kind of go back a little bit, and I'm going to deselect the stroke layer so we get that yellow line out of there. You can see that hold on, let me my pen that we get this nice wispy lines, and that can be attributed to the uh, taper feature. So if we click on the stroke, you can see that right under taper, I clicked uh, the ch the box is checked enabled. If I take that off, you can see what this effect does um, when it's not on. And so this is kind of just your kind of plain Jane line. It's not very sexy. You know, it just doesn't look very uh, organic. So it's a it's an awesome feature. I usually have it on for all my projects. Um, normally, these lines aren't going to be as bright and kind of neon. I used uh, Trap Code Star Glow to kind of bring out some of that color and uh, kind of fades into some purple, which is kind of cool. But uh, that's you know uh, rather here nor there. The next thing that I'm going to talk about here is the repeat feature. If I go and I click on the repeat tab and I click on enable, this is going to bring up a whole set of uh, options that I can use to, and let me go turn my taper back on, and it's going to uh, allow me to set the number of instances this is set at two, so it's going to double each one of these lines. And if you go out, you can kind of see the effect with everything. My computer's running a little bit slow. I'm even you know, running at half resolution. But this will give you kind of an idea of what the repeat function will do. 
kind of cool, adds a little bit of depth to it. Um, if you want to make that depth a little bit larger, you can increase the factor, and that will increase the distance between e each one of those repeat lines. Um, but let's go back in, and there's a couple of other things that uh, I'm going to cover a little bit further in the second half of the tutorial, but I just kind of wanted to touch on now. Um, one of the cool features about uh, Trapco 3D Stroke is it allows it, you to have your own camera within it, and you can actually, it has an auto-orient feature, which you can uh, rotate around you know, any XYZ axis, and it will keep your logo or whatever you're doing the stroke generation on uh, in the center of the composition, which is really nice. Um, another nice thing about it is it has over 64, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, different shapes that you can use. And you'll see, in the, uh, again, the second half of the tutorial, uh, how I use some of these shapes to kind of add uh, a little bit of an extra effect to my motion graphics. So um, with that being said, that's pretty much all I'm going to touch on for the beginning part of this, just giving you an idea of how to set this up and kind of get off the ground running. We're going to um, we're gonna look at some of the, uh, the other features. Uh, in my other video, I talked about sequential stroke um, for the animated handwriting video. Um, this one, I don't have it selected, uh, but you know, go back to that video if you want to see uh, more in-depth explanation of the sequ sequential stroking. Um, what else want I talk about? Uh, I, I really wasn't going to talk a whole lot about the actual underwater scene, but it is something that I can already tell people are going to want to uh, know about and be asking questions. Uh, when I created this uh, motion graphic, uh, I was actually kind of following a tutorial up on Red Giant TV. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, it's an awesome tutorial. Basically, what we have is um, our water layer, which is actually a trap code form layer, which we're going to be covering more on in uh, future tutorials. Uh, it's a, f a form layer that uses a layer map from a, display a separate pre-composed uh, displacement map. Um, it kind of gives the illusion that you're going through the water, but in reality, you're not. Um, there's, so there's a couple of things that we did to make it look as if we're actually going through Z-Space um, uh, that with, um, we used a trap code particular to create the little flowing bubbles. Uh, you know, just, a, 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 it's a pretty basic setup. There's a black background, a floor, and some water. Uh, through the water layer, we also used a, uh, a vector blur and, uh, what was it? A uh, trap code shine so that we could set a light above the water and have the light kind of refract through the water and get thrown all around uh, underneath to kind of give a real nice and organic effect. But that's uh, that's kind of not what I want to really be talking about. If you guys want me to do a more in-depth explanation, um, I will. But uh, for now, let's go head over to the Blood Baron and talk a little bit about uh, transforming and using Z-Space uh, for your Trap Code 3D Stroke Projects.